We are going to start this meeting. Others are going ahead with breathing. Don't you all love writing? Because I know I do. It's even better when you know more about grammar, punctuation, and so much more while you're writing. Which is why I was so happy when I finally learned about the semicolon. And yes, this does actually kind of sound like a really bad ad. Anyway, and I'm especially thankful for my writer's craft teacher back in high school for doing such a good job. Great job. I look forward to his classes every day along with my two spares and lunch that I'd occasionally spend in his class. <laughs> but enough of my amazing teachers and how much I love English and writing, let's get into the semicolon. And trust me, it's much easier to understand and input subconsciously once you've had some practice with it. And don't worry, if you feel as though this episode doesn't fit your learning style, being a podcast and all, then I've also made sure to include a link in the description where you'll be able to watch a further explanation on YouTube. But let's start off at the beginning. Section 1. What is a semicolon? As you can see from the appearance of the semicolon, the bottom is a comma and the top is a period. But what does that mean exactly? Well, what does this comma do? It connects sentences and points that and can be used either with or without conjunctions. Conjunctions being word like words like if, but, and, although, and many more. I may make an episode on conjunctions in the future as well to add further explanation. Anyway, a semicolon's role is to add a connection without being a complete stop. So for instance, where there may be many commas but a period would completely mess up the flow for the reader, and too many periods can make the sentence grammatically incorrect, and all those stops would just be a nightmare, henceforth the semicolon. Section 2. When can I use a semicolon? There are actually more... There are actually more places one can use a semicolon than you may think. It just turns out that a lot of people prefer to use a comma, so a semicolon is more of a little treat after all. After all, you wouldn't want to overuse it. It's not quite as resilient as the comma and period. In just a moment, two example sentences will pop up, completely unpunctuated. If you're listening to a site that allows the video component like Spotify, YouTube, or Patreon, then feel free to pause, write it down, and fill out the punctuation yourself. So, for the first sentence... So, for the first sentence, I... Yeah, yeah, I couldn't help myself. Jasmine's cookies looked absolutely delicious. Although, I guess I could make it up to her by buying her some more cookies. Feel free to take a moment to pause and figure out what punctuations go where. Did you know that the semicolon itself first appeared back in 1494? It was then mainly used in music for several centuries, until it finally began being used within stories. Alright, that should be enough time for now. And if you need more, then don't hesitate to pause. Alright, so... By the looks of the sentence, the first one can be either a semicolon or a comma. For the sake of this lesson, I'll, ha- I'll have it as a semicolon. The next one will be a period. It could also be a comma, but that'll risk the sentence being too long. The third one will, have, however, be a comma. And whether or not we put a comma in the second one doesn't affect the fact that we need to put a comma after a conjunction in this instance. Then, of course, the final one will be a period due to it being the end of the sentence. Now, let's get on to the next sentence. I've been working so hard, while Jason has just been slamming his keyboard and expects praise. I try to... I try to make all of my stories perfect, while he doesn't even care about his art. Once again, 
don't hesitate to pause in order to write everything down yourself. I write everything down and try it out for yourself. Now, did you know that growing up, I wasn't taught about the semicolon until 12th grade? It's true. Even in 6th grade, when my friends in other classes would be talking about it, I couldn't even remember if the comma went on the top or the bottom. And don't even get me started on how often I mix up the colon and semicolon in my head. Alright, done? Ready? Alright, let's get on to figuring out the sentence. For the first one, I know it feel, feels like it really needs a conjunction there, but for the, but, like, but for instance, but no. Grammatically, that's exactly where a semicolon can be placed, with no issues. Whatsoever. This is because both points are related, so they can't necessarily be separated by period. Now for the next one. Now, it may be tempting to toss a comma in there, since it's technically talking about the same thing. However, the points are different. The point before it was how lousy Jason is while still expecting praise. But the next point is about how we love and care for our writing. Granted, you could put a comma here if you wish, but also just make sure sure the sentences aren't being made long, too long. So we'll put a period there. Second last one, I bet some of you think a semicolon should go there, but actually no. Because in this case, while it is a conjunction, because in this case, while is a conjunction, so actually a comma goes there. Then of course, we finish off the sentence with a period, obviously. Now section three, when can't I use a semicolon? Well, as you all had seen before with the past sentences, it would be before conjunctions. Most of the time of the, most of the time of course. And they also can only be used to attach two statements that are related. So let's get into some examples. Jeremy was so sweet when he offered to take my dog for a walk. I really want to grab a bite to eat with Sandra tonight, but sadly, she's too busy. Just as before, take a moment to pause and write this down if you'd like, if you'd like, and fill it out before coming back to me. Now, did you know that you should actually warm milk up before adding it to sugar and butter? to a sugar and butter mixture when making caramel. I know it has nothing to do with writing, but learning that has taught me where I was consistently going wrong when making my own caramel at home. All right, enough of that. Let's get into this explanation. First up, for the first blank space, we have a period. This is because Jeremy being kind and walking his friend's dog does not directly correlate whatsoever with the character wanting to grab a bite to eat with Sandra tonight. Henceforth, the period. For the second pause, we actually have a comma, and this is due to the conjunction just after it. Though, if we were to take out the conjunction, then we'd definitely be able to toss the semicolon in there. But sadly, but is stuck in place, so comma will have to do. Now for a second and final example. And you know what I told her? I said, and don't take this the wrong way, go and ask someone who actually cares. Oh, Cindy texted. She wants to know the answers to the math homework. You all know what I'm gonna say. Feel free to pause if needed to fill out the examples yourselves. Did you know? that to temper dark chocolate, it must be between 50 to 55 degrees Celsius, while milk and white chocolate only need to be at 40 to 45 degrees Celsius. Just a bit of information that may be helpful to you someday. Especially since when I was first making chocolate, I ended up not knowing that the temperature required for it was so low. So I ended up like overcooking it a lot, I didn't temper properly. So yeah, that's actually good to know if you ever want to make chocolate. Alright, I've already missed a week due to lame excuses like being tired. 
So let's get this episode into its dramatic conclusion with this final example. First up is going to be a question mark due to the character asking whoever they're speaking to if they know what they have said. Then we have a comma due to the pause that adds a bit of an explanation. After that we have a second comma that ends the explanation and proceeds back on to the main point. Then we have a period. This is due to the O being an in being a pa pause caused by Cindy texting, therefore it is a separate su topic. That's when we proceed on to another comma, which is due entirely because of this of the interjection, O. Oh. Then we have another, and yes, another comma after texted. This is because of the context progre progressing onto the explanation, which is mentioning that Sydney wants answers to the homework, and finally, with the end of the sentence, we finish off with a period. Now, wasn't that an informative episode? I especially like the part with cho with the chocolate. Anyway, check out my novels am on Amazon and Kobo, link in the description. Check out Creative Rank Club Premium on Patreon and Spotify, link in the description. Check out the Creative Rank Club Discord server in the description. Check out my personal Instagram at dark underscore night underscore wolves. And did you know that you can make squirrels come to you by just making a clicking sound? Like that? I had done that not too long ago when I decided to go out for a run and got distracted by the albino squirrels, which... Living in Montreal, a lot of the animals look much different than the ones in Ottawa. Like, I'd never seen a pure white squirrel before. Um, when I live in Ottawa, but when I came to Montreal, they're basically all over the place. And even the geese look completely different, too. Eh. One even climbed onto my hand. Like, one of the squirrels. And they are so soft. Though, make sure that they are nice squirrels, because you wouldn't want to end up in the hospital. And I especially should not mess around so much, because I do not have healthcare here yet. I should get on that.